Good morning, friends. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to church. It's good to have you here today. Welcome to this sacred time. Welcome to God's loving presence. Welcome to this sunshine that's warming our hearts and bringing energy to creation. It's good to be here and be in your midst today. My name is Pastor Jared, and I greet you in the loving name of Jesus, who continues to share his unconditional, life-changing love with us during this special Easter season. We are an affirming congregation who seeks to love and cherish all people who cross our path, and we come here to worship so that we can be shaped and formed by the Spirit, so that our hearts will continually be bent towards loving kindness to ourselves, to creation, to our neighbors, and to the world. And so with all that we sing and say and hear and pray today, we, uh, we ask the Spirit to come and be in this place and to work in our hearts and minds and our bodies so that we can be part of God's redemption of creation. It's good to be back with you after a week of vacation. I did not buy a new vehicle uh, out there. That construction equipment is still here from our sewer project. It is wrapping up um, and should be completed tomorrow, I think, as they remove the equipment and the last uh, buckets of dirt. Um, and so we're grateful for that update and uh, things can now move forward um, without any clogs, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, friends, as we worship today, I pray that wherever you are, whether you're here in the sanctuary, whether you're joining us on the live stream, that you'll uh, seek the presence and the love of God as we pray and sing and worship together. As you're able, won't you stand for our call to worship today? This call to worship is based on Psalm 4, and I'll invite you to read the bold print as you respond to me reading the regular print. In the stillness of this sacred moment, let us call upon the Lord. Our hearts are open, O Lord, for you have filled our hearts with great joy. Many are asking, who can show us any good? Let the light of your face shine upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness in our hearts. Our joy abounds. In peace. We will lie down and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, make us dwell in safety. We trust in your unfailing love. Let us worship God in spirit and in truth. For the Lord is our righteousness, our protector, and our peace. Let us sing one of our favorite Easter hymns during the Easter season. Christ is risen, number 307 in your blue hymnal. Christ is risen, shout Hosanna, son the brightest day of days. Christ is risen, hush in wonder, all creation is amazed. In the desert, all surrounding, see a spreading tree has grown. Healing leaves of grace abounding, bring a taste of Christ is risen, raise your spirits from the caverns of despair. Walk with gladness in the morning, see what love can do and dare. Drink the wine of resurrection, see a spreadlet but a friend. Jesus is our strong companion, joy and peace shall Christ is risen, earth and heaven, never more shall be the same. Bread of heaven, a new creation, where the world is still in pain. Tell its grim demonic chorus, Christ is risen, get ye gone. For the first and last is with us, sing Hosanna. Amen. Please be seated. If you're worshiping with us for the first or second time this week, I invite or this time, I invite you to 
Make sure you grab a Connect card and let us know your contact information so that we can reach out and let you know more about this congregation. If you're worshiping with us online, there's a link that you can click in the, uh, underneath the window, uh, the viewing window, where you can click and give us some contact information so we can connect with you as well. And the back of this always has a place for you to write prayer requests, either private confidential prayer requests or public prayer requests that you'd like to be on our prayer, prayer list. Um, never forget that we are a praying congregation We've seen miracles and prayers answered and God's love abound and healing love abound in people's hearts and minds and bodies. As we go to God in prayer today for our opening prayer, I'll invite you to pray these words with me. Let us pray in unison. Miraculous God, come to us now, even as your son came to those first disciples on the shores of Galilee. Speak your peace to our hearts, touch us with your Holy Spirit, reveal your word, that we may hear your message this day, and live as your disciples in the days and years to come. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. It's our children's moment, so I'd like to invite any children are here to come and join me down front as the congregation leads us in Jesus Loves Me. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Oh, hello friends, good to see you this morning, good to see you. I've got something in my lap here. Um, and I just, I don't want you to be afraid of, did you hear that noise? What was that? Did somebody burp? <laughs> no? Oh, it's making noise. Do you hear it? It's the bottle. It's the bottle. Oh, you caught me. Okay. We're going to talk about fear a little bit this morning, but I want you to think with me, is there ever a time recently when you've been just a little bit afraid? A little bit afraid. Hmm. Would you be willing to share that if you can think of it? Hmm. Maybe afraid of the dark? Afraid of the rain or thunder or lightning? We just saw a big musical, a biblical musical, and there were fake lions in it. Do you remember that, Adelaide? That kind of scared me a little bit, even though they weren't real. That was a little bit scary. Yeah. Well, I'm going to ask you to do something that you might be afraid of, okay? But... But I think you can do it. You want to give it a shot, Julia? Okay. So you're going to give a shot? Elliot, maybe a bit for it too? Okay. So in our scripture today, Jesus has disciples, and he's already ris arisen from the dead, but they're not quite sure what's happening. They're not sure. A couple of the disciples have seen Jesus alive, but they're also kind of afraid. They're afraid of that this may not be real. They're afraid about what's going to happen next. They've got a lot of fear, and they're anxious about what the future will bring. And Jesus shows up to them to help calm their fears. Now, I have something in here that you might be afraid of, but I'm going to tell you something so that you're not afraid, so that you're willing to reach inside this without knowing what's in there, okay? Are you ready? Julia, do you want to go first? Okay, close your eyes. Now, oh, here's the secret. Once you feel what's in there, you can't tell them, okay? Make sure it's a surprise for them. All right. Close your eyes. Don't be afraid. All right, reach in with one hand. Did you feel it? That was silly, wasn't it? Were you afraid before you did it? No? All right, Elliot, you want to give it a shot? All right, close your eyes. Reach in. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Oh, how was that? Not too scary, right? Okay, let's let Adelaide reach in. Close your eyes, Adelaide, reach in. Reach in, reach in. <laughs> oh, yeah. It wasn't too scary, was it? It was just cotton balls, right? <laughs> just cotton balls. Well, the disciples were facing a lot more than just cotton balls. They were really scared that they would have to leave their homes forever. They might have to run away, that Jesus really wasn't going to come back, even though they kind of saw him. They didn't know what was going on. But Jesus wanted to assure that them that that he was going to be with them forever. So he came into their house while they were arguing about what was happening and trying to figure it out. And he didn't say, don't be afraid or what's up, you wussies? Come on, pull it together. He wasn't mean. He just said, peace.
peace be with you. He wished them peace. He knew that they were going to be afraid. And I think he thought, you know, it's okay to be afraid. Being scared sometimes is good for us and it's natural. But while they were afraid, he wished them peace. And then he sat down with them and had a meal with them. He shared food with them so that they would know that he was real and that he loved them and that his presence would be with them forever and ever and ever. He wished them peace. He didn't tell them to never be afraid again or you, why are you afraid? He didn't question them. He just wished them peace, peace, peace. And he shared food with them because that's one of the ways that God shows that God loves us by sharing food with us. And that's what we're going to do today when we gather around the communion table later in worship. We're going to share food together and remember that God's presence is always with us so that we can face the fear whenever we find it in our lives. Let's pray, okay? <clears throat> God, thank you that through your son Jesus, you raised him from the dead and helped all your disciples then and even now to know that we can face fear in the world because you are with us. You bring us peace. You gather around us around your table and dine with us so that we can feel your presence and know your love. Help us to share that love with others and spread your peace to all those who face fear. In Jesus' name, let all God's children say, amen, amen. You guys can have a treat or two as you go back to your seat and the congregation will keep singing for us. Yes, Jesus loves me. Friends, I'm so grateful for our folks who helped to lead worship last week and participate, and I'm grateful for Jenny Coville, chaplain from Logan Health Whitefish, for coming and offering the message and bringing her wisdom and grace and uh, spirit um, to our congregation last weekend. It's good to be back among you and to continue to celebrate this Easter season together. Two weeks ago was Easter Sunday. It feels so much longer ago than that. <laughs> but the shock and the joy of the resurrection are, are wearing off a little bit, right? Maybe you've taken your Easter decorations down or you're wondering, you're looking forward to the next holiday, Memorial Day or Mother's Day. You know, we've all moved on a little bit, it always seems. So it's time to make sure taxes are done by tomorrow at midnight, right? And prepare for spring planting and lawn mowing, life has a kind of momentum to it, and we're moving along with that momentum. But that wasn't always the case for the disciples and the first followers of Jesus. Last Sunday, <clears throat> Jenny preached from John's Gospel, and she remembered an episode when Jesus appeared to his disciples in a locked room. Luke retells that episode in a little different way in this Gospel, on that first Easter Sunday morning, the women reported the discovery of an empty tomb. And days later, two disciples were traveling to Emmaus on a walk and met a man who, during the breaking of their bread at a meal, was revealed to them as Jesus, resurrected and alive. And while the disciples are discussing these two events in our scripture today, Jesus appears again to the group. So hear these words from Luke's Gospel, 24, verses 36 through 48. While they, the disciples, were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, why are you frightened and why did doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see me. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he said this, he showed him his hands and his feet. Yet for all their joy, they were still disbelieving and wondering. And he said to them, have you have, do you have anything to eat? 
They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. My friends, this is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, after the arrest and the torture and the execution of Jesus, his disciples were in a status of fear and frustration and terror. And then after it's discovered that his body is missing, those same disciples and followers find themselves confused and anxious and suspicious. And like amateur detectives bogged down in fear and the unknown, they meet together to try to sort out what is really going on. What happened? Who can be believed? What's coming next? Whose testimony right now is credible and who is lying? The fear of these men and women is so palpable. Fear is a powerful feeling and an emotion. And sometimes we freeze when we're afraid. Sometimes we react defensively. A few weeks ago, I went to the National Geographic Speakers Series at the Walkholtz at the Community College to hear this woman, photojournalist Lindsay Adario, I wanted to hear her talk about her life and her work as a conflict photojournalist. I read her memoir a few years ago, and I've followed her career. She has faced a lot of fear in her life. Her focus and her work takes her to places of war and conflict and humanitarian disaster, places like Afghanistan and Iraq, Libya, and most recently she's been covering the war in Ukraine. Now, she's won multiple multiple Pulitzer Prizes, and she even won a MacArthur Genius Grant Award in 2009. During her talk at the Walkholz, she she talked about these awards and kind of fluffed them off a little bit, like it wasn't too big of a deal, but it was. But then she talked about the first time that she was ever shot at when she was in a war zone. In Afghanistan, right after the war began there in the early 2000s. She was in a foxhole with American soldiers, a place that few journalists ever go and have ever been, and she was shot at, and she forgot to take pictures. That's her job, and she forgot. She kind of laughed about it now, but she said she was terrified. She was afraid. She couldn't even lift her arm out of the foxholes to peek out and take pictures with her camera. She was frozen. She couldn't snap anything. She said that since then, she's had to learn to face her fear and do her work, but she'll never forget that first time when she froze in fear, rightly so, but she had to learn how to unfreeze. The disciples are trying to learn how to unfreeze too, how to face their fear in the midst of confusion. And to me, that's what makes the presence of Jesus in this story so, so powerful. He comes and he meets his friends and his followers right where they are, in their very stuck place, their very fearful moment, so that they can experience his love and his care. And he says four things to them. He says, first, peace be with you. Then he basically says, stop freaking out. (laughs) And then he asks, hey, what's for dinner tonight? (laughs) And then he finishes with, Be my witnesses. Be my witnesses. As the disciples are talking, Jesus appears and out of nowhere says, Peace be with you. His words are words of comfort, but they're also words of challenge. How could they feel peaceful in the midst of such a storm in the middle of their life? Jesus assures them that, you know, it's possible. And he demonstrates this possibility with his next phrase, his next statement. He says, See me. Touch me. Know that I am real. In essence, he's saying, don't be frightened. Don't freak out. Jesus proves that he's real and that he's alive and that God has the final say in creation. 
Not death and not empire and not evil. So whatever unease or fear these followers might have, Jesus comes with his physical presence and reveals that God is at work among them, powerfully at work, redeeming all of creation. And to offer further proof that he's really, really alive, he asks for food. He asks for a meal. What is for dinner? He isn't simply a spirit or a ghost. He's a physical person, the Son of God, and he's hungry. That's how we know Jesus is a Methodist. (laughs) As soon as he gets together with other followers, they have to have food, right? And so they give him just a piece of fish laying around. You know, we think we'd want to give the Son of God, when he shows up resurrected, a five-star, five-course meal, right? But they just give him what's there. And he devours it and shares fellowship with the others, just as they all did before the crucifixion. By sharing a meal and inviting his followers to touch him and to see him with their own eyes, Jesus meets his followers right where they are, just how they're feeling. He offers himself without reservation, and he blesses them with what seems like such an impossible blessing. But he doesn't leave his followers in this place of security and comfort and quiet and safety, right, inside this building, just feeling his Uh, presence and hearing his voice and, and sharing a meal with them. After he speaks to them and reassures them, after he invites them to touch and see and eat, he then challenges them to move beyond where they are in that moment. He challenges them to be his witnesses. That's his final statement. Be my witnesses. The scripture says that the Messiah is to suffer and die and to rise from the dead and on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. And he says, you are my witnesses of these things. When we encounter fear and skepticism and an unknown future, is that how we respond? by taking on the challenge and being a witness to faith, hope, and love? I react a lot, often more like the photographer, Lindsay Adario. I freeze. I freeze in my fear. I try to stay isolated in my confusion and my unease about the unknown. Or other times we all seek safety or security or our own personal patterns and priorities and routines. But rarely do we respond with, a courageous spirit of peace and confidence. And yet that's what Jesus invites us here to do as his followers, to be his witnesses to the world. In opening their minds to the scriptures, as as Luke writes, Jesus reveals that all this fear that they've gone through and the pain of his suffering and death and resurrection, it's not just for a select few people nor is it for our own comfort and just our security. The act of God in Jesus Christ is an act of salvation and redemption for all people. But who will tell his story? Jesus says it must be us. We must tell the story. We must move beyond the comfort of Jesus' resurrected presence to be witnesses to Jesus' resurrected presence. That's our call as followers and as disciples and as Christians, little Christs around the world, ambassadors to the spirit of faith, hope, and love that God has for us all. As we continue walking through these days and seasons of Easter, we're invited to keep moving from places of fear to places of peace, from places of comfort with Jesus' presence to places where we challenge the world with Jesus' presence. How will you tell the story? Will you tell it through music? Will you tell it through acts of love and gifts of joy and peace? Will you tell it through loving your enemy and forgiving the one who has slighted you? How will you tell the story and be a witness of Jesus? How might we meet people in their moments of anxiety and uncertainty, like Christ met his followers? and bear witness to God's unconditional love. 
Christ has met us where we are. Christ asks us to move forward. May we respond as his witnesses with grace and courage and love to all. Amen. Friends, one of the ways we tell the good news of Christ's love and serve as witnesses of love and reconciliation is through our relationship with Native Americans as a denomination. Today in the United Methodist Church's Native American Ministry Sundays, and you'll see an envelope in your uh, bulletin today inviting you to give toward this effort. Today we celebrate this special Sunday as a denomination, one of our six special Sundays, because we want to raise awareness and celebrate and remind ourselves as United Methodists of all the gifts and contributions made by Native Americans to our church and to our society and to our global community. We come today and we affirm the sacredness of indigenous people and their languages their cultures and gifts to the church and the world. And it's important for us here in Columbia Falls to acknowledge the history of the land that our church is on. We acknowledge that this church is located on the traditional and the ancestral land and territory of the Kootenai and Salish peoples, the Cayuse, the Umatilla, and the Walla Walla peoples. We continue to thank them for their hospitality and their stewardship of this land. But acknowledgement of land without action towards equity can be an empty practice. And so that's why we as a denomination seek to give our resources, our time and our energy and our voices towards equity, towards reconciliation and healing of people and the land. So we collect this offering today in support of the vital ministries of Native Americans in our denomination. Last year, as a worldwide church, we gave over $243,000 towards this special Sunday initiative. In each annual conference, in our Mountain Sky annual conference, 50% of donations today stay within the conference and go to develop and strengthen Native American ministries, just like our siblings across the divide at Browning United Methodist Parish at Bump. Another 25% of donations go towards scholarships for Native American students, studying at United Methodist Schools of Theology. And then the final 25% goes towards program development with UMC partners beyond just our denomination all around the country to develop programs like mentoring and peer coaching and development and support systems so that all of our Native American siblings can thrive and uh, find God's flourishing love. If you'd like to donate to this today, you can write a separate check and put Native American Sunday on the check and put it in this envelope in the offering plate. You can do like I did this morning and go online to, U- to um, UMC Give and give there or go to our website, ColumbiaFallsUMC.org and click Give. And there's a special way to give to Native American Ministries Sundays. I invite you to do that as you're able and as you're willing in the, today and in the days and weeks ahead. Now, as we tell the story and remember Christ's challenge to be witnesses, I want to invite our choir to come up as we offer our offertory anthem today.
as we offer our offering prayer together. Author of life and giver of all gifts, we thank you for the many blessings of our lives. Receive now these gifts and transform them with the power of your love. May they become witnesses to your resurrection, proclaiming your power and forgiveness in our community and throughout the world. Amen. You may be seated. Friends who are, well, we are gathering now around Christ's table, just like those disciples long ago, fellowship, fellowshipping with the body and the blood of Jesus and remembering that his presence is with us always to help us be his witnesses unto the end of the earth. Our friends who are joining us on the live stream, I, I hope that you will gather crackers or bread, uh, juice or tea, whatever is sacred and available to you now in this moment, and participate with us in Holy Communion as we all gather around this table together now. Typically, we use a spoken liturgy, but it's Easter season, and I asked Paula to help us offer a musical liturgy for our communion today. So if you'll take your blue hymnal and turn to page 17 of your hymnal, it's towards the very, very front. First person there gets a big piece of bread. <laughs> we don't normally look in this part of our hymnal, but it's on page 17, and then we'll be flipping the page. These are the same words that 
we say every month as we celebrate communion together, but today we will, we will sing them. If you know them at home on our live stream, I invite you to sing along, or you can speak them along with us as well. Friends, as we uh, prepare to receive the body and blood of Christ, I'll invite you to be silent for a moment, a time of confession and silent prayer together. We thank you, God, especially during this Easter season for the forgiveness and renewal you offer us through your son, Jesus. We now celebrate his gift as we gather around this Holy Communion table. Friends, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right to give our saints and grace. It is right and a good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. And when we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity. You made covenant to be our sovereign God. You brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey and set before us a new way of life. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise their name and sing as we join their unending hymn. Blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. By your great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of your Son from the dead, and to an inheritance which is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Once we were no people, but now we are your people declaring your wonderful deeds in Christ, who called us out of darknesses, darkness into his marvelous light. When the Lord Jesus, or on the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took the bread and broke it, gave thanks to you and gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this as often as you eat it in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to you and gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in, in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves today in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and a living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as together we sing about the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Let us pray. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and the fruit of the vine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we might be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, be with those for whom we pray today. For Patty, recovering at home after hospitalization. For Bob and Katie, 
for Evan and Mark, for Kay and Paul, for David and Thomas, Stephanie and Sarah, for Jim and Ivan, Jesse and Evelyn, for Robin and Chris and Herb. We pray for Rick Smith beginning chemo for bladder cancer and surgery in Seattle. We pray for those facing the journey of cancer, for Lynn and Cindy, Cindy, for Katie and Murray, Walt and Crystal, John and Margaret, Lee and Walter and Larry. We pray for all people facing violence and war and oppression, especially those in Gaza and Israel. We pray for all those affected by natural disasters. And we offer now our personal prayers and concerns during this moment of silence. We thank you, God, that you do indeed hear our prayers. By your Spirit now, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we all feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever, as we sing our Amen. Join me as we pray the prayer Jesus taught us, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, a reminder that this is not my table. This is not the table of this church. This is the table of Jesus Christ this morning. He invites all of us to come and receive and be fed. If you are yearning in any small way, shape, or form for a closer connection with Jesus today, he invites you to come and receive the bread and take it and dip it in the juice and partake and then return to your seat. If you would prefer an enclosed capsule of communion or gluten-free bread, those are available on the uh, table to my left and your right. Jesus taught us that the last shall be first, and so we'll invite the back row to come forward to receive communion. Just come together in the center and move down forward and then return to back to your seats um, this way. Shirley will be helping me serve communion today. So after she comes forward, I invite you to begin coming forward.
you bow your heads with me as we pray. Loving God, we thank you today that you have fed us in this sacrament and united us with Christ and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet in your eternal kingdom. Send us out now in the power of your spirit to live and work as your witnesses for your praise and glory. In Jesus' name, let all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Friends, our closing song today is in your black hymnal, number 2108, Oh, How He Loves You and Me. Let's stand as you're able and sing together.
Friends, what celebrations or announcements can we lift up together today? Oh, Steve's. <laughs> See, I just wasn't watching you. I must be in the choir. <laughs> I would like to take a, a moment of our time so that I can thank those of our Methodist family who came and attended the community choir program last night. Um, I really, really appreciate your attendance. The choir appreciates your, your attention and attendance as well. And we will be combining with the um, community band on May 1st. And before, between now and May 1st, the community choir has three other programs at nursing homes um, in the Valley. Thank you. Any other celebrations or announcements today? Thanks to all of you who last Sunday um, checked the church directory. Um, as we said, um, CARE team has had a number of requests to update our church directory, so we are in the process of updating just the names and the addresses, the contact information, not the photos this time, so I will put this on the table out in the entryway, and if you will check your name to make sure all the name and contact information is accurate. If, you, if there's some information there that you would rather not have in the church directory, cross it out. We're asking people to opt out. So if we don't, if you don't cross anything out, um, you're going in. <laughs> um, I think last week I suggested to put an OK by your name so that we'd know that you had double checked it. Um, so, but even if there's not an OK, <laughs> we're in. So, so OK, I think that's, we'll, we'll do this for the next few weeks. Yeah. Yeah, Ed. The baby that was born in our house has now reached 10 and a half pounds. Wow, that's awesome. Grown like a weed. Wow. <laughs> that's praise God. That's wonderful. Thank you for giving us an update. Yeah. A reminder that uh, the men's group will gather for dinner tomorrow night in the fellowship hall. Um, tomorrow afternoon, there's an opportunity for the mission team at the Wildcat Garden at 12, right? And at 10 a.m., the Methodist meetup is happening uh, with other Methodist churches down at um, uh, Lakeside uh, United Methodist Church. And we're going to be talking about our missionary Ken Kume's visit and how we can support him and be uh, hospitable, hospitable to him as he arrives uh, sometime in May. That schedule just got thrown up in the air, so pray for Ken a little bit. Yeah. Any other celebrations or announcements today? I don't think we're doing chimes that way. Chimes Wednesday? No, no, chimes. no chimes Wednesday. Okay, all right. But early on Sunday. Oh, now I have more time to write a longer sermon for next there week. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Last but not least, I celebrate that Sharon is here today. It's so good to have you in person with us, and we're glad to see you walking and moving and looking so vital and vigorous. It's great to see you, and we'll continue to pray for you, and we celebrate um, all your recovery and the long way that you've come to this milestone. It's amazing. We're glad to have you here in person. Yeah. Well, friends, uh, remember that Jesus comes and brings his body and his appetite to make sure that you know his presence and feel his love and are, um, can believe in his resurrected life. But he doesn't stop there. He invites us to be his witnesses, and he challenges us to live with peace, not only for our own safety, but for the well-being and the flourishing of others, to tell the story of his love to all people. Go and find a way to do that, just that thing this week. Go now in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.